So there are two limits that you need to know. The first one is that for any real number k, the limit as x tends to infinity of x to k e to the minus x is equal to zero. Now that's not immediately obvious as to why that would be the case. Um, and I'm going to go through a proof of that now. Now, to start off with, we're just going to assume that k is a positive integer, okay, just to kind of start this off. So if we look at the limit as x tends to infinity, I'm going to write it as x to the k over e to the x. And I can write that as the limit as x tends to infinity and use the Maclaurin series on the denominator with x to the k in the numerator and say that that's equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus dot 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 dot. Now remember we're going to assume that k is a positive integer here. Okay, So that means that eventually I'm going to reach x to the k over k factorial. And then the next term will be x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial. And then the next term would be x to the k plus 2 over k plus 2 factorial plus dot 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 dot. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is because x is tending to infinity, it'd be perfectly fine to divide top and bottom by x to the k. So the limit as x tends to infinity and we're going to have 1 in the numerator. Now, dividing each of these terms by x to the k, I'm going to have x to the minus k plus x to the 1 divided by x to the k is x to the 1 minus k. Then x to the 2 minus k over 2 factorial plus dot, 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 plus 1 over k factorial plus uh, then we're going to have x over k plus 1 factorial, then x squared over k plus 2 factorial plus dot 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 dot. Now, as x tends to infinity, each of these terms um, are 1 over x to the something. Okay, So all of these will tend to 0 as x tends to infinity. Whereas all of these terms that we have here, we've also got this term here, but all of these terms will tend to infinity as x tends to infinity. So all of those will go to zero, and the denominator is going to be getting larger and larger and larger and larger. And so the denominator is tending to infinity. Uh, so we've got one over something that's tending to infinity, which is therefore tending to zero. And so that is why the limit is zero. Now, our proof here only worked for uh, k being positive integers. But what you can argue is that to... Um, obviously, you're going to have a bit of problem with using the factorials here, OK? But ignoring that, um, with like, just in the way that it's written out, OK? So effectively, if we were to extend this, um, what we would need to do is just consider a general terms uh, so that we can have the factorials. But when you divide by x to the k, what's going to happen is that eventually you're going to get to a term somewhere in here where the power of x is going to be positive. So you're going to eventually get to some term x to the r over r factorial in here. When you divide by x to the k, you're going to get x to the r minus k over r factorial. And there is going to be some term where r minus k is positive. OK? And the moment that happens, all of those terms from that point on will tend to infinity. And all of the previous terms will tend to zero. So it's a, a very similar proof that you can go through to explain a way uh, where k is uh, any real number. OK, so you can also argue that point in a very similar way. Now, you might have thought, oh, could we have done that using L'Hopital's rule? Um, yes, you could, uh, but it would be an infinite... 
infinitely going further down, down and down and down with it. Um, that's the only problem here. This uh, encapsulates it all in one, uh, in, all in one go. So it's probably better than L'Hopital's rule in that way. So how about this integral here? So what we could do is we could write this as the limit as a tends to infinity of the integral between 2 and a of x take away 2 e to the minus x dx. Okay. Right. So then what we could do um, is we could then uh, integrate this by parts. So uh, we're going to have u as the x minus 2 and dv by dx as the e to the minus x. So du by dx is 1, v is minus e to the minus x. So we've got the limit as a tends to infinity of u times v, so minus x take away 2, e to the minus x, evaluated between 2 and a. Take away the integral of v times du by dx, so plus the integral of e to the minus x dx, evaluated between 2 and a, like so. So we've got the limit as a tends to infinity of, uh, now, let's split, well, let's keep that in one go, shall we? So we've got, uh, substituting in the a, we're going to have uh, minus a minus 2 e to the minus a. Substitute in the 2, then we've got um, 0, so that's just going to be 0, plus this bit here, so evaluate minus e to the minus x, evaluate between 2 and a. So we've got the limit as a tends to infinity of... I'm going to expand this bit out. So we've got minus a e to the minus a plus 2e to the minus a. Then substituting in here, we're going to have minus e to the minus a. And then substituting in the 2, so we're going to have take away a minus, so plus e to the minus 2. Now, as a tends to infinity, we know by this rule up here that this is going to tend to 0. And we know that's going to tend to 0, and that's going to tend to 0. So what's going to be left is e to the minus 2. OK? As each of those terms will tend to 0. And so that is the value of our integral.